Look at these bastards right here. Bon appetit. This is bird fruit. This is not for you. Oh, so many. Hi. Yeah, please don't jump on that. So, you know, the, the funny part is we have a bird feeder. Yeah, this one. And squirrels will get on the tree and jump on it and swing. Like it's a swing. So, that happens. And also, you see those little pegs for the birds to sit on? Well, they ripped one out to get the food with their hand. <laughs> so, yeah. Squirrels. Hi, this is Katya with Total Body Lab and this will be a short daily digest on what to do if you have been doing an exercise. It's a compound exercise and it hurts and like not in a good way. So you're thinking, oh, maybe I'll just rest, you know, give it a break and recover. Let's say you recover, it doesn't hurt when you move, but then you do it and it starts to hurt again. And you're like, okay, now what do I need to do? Because when you do this exercise, it hurts equally or more 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 warm-up doesn't help waiting more in between those exercises like throughout the week or throughout your training days does not help so what the hell do you do also I just want to say oops forgot to hook up the microphone hold on <laughs> microphone hooked up I hope it worked yes okay um, I just wanted to say thank you for everybody who is supporting me and hitting the likes and the comments on these recent videos because it took me like forever to get to this place where I'm okay just making this and publishing without editing and without makeup and without like too much prep. You know, I have some ideas, I have some scripts in here and I take notes on what is filmed, what I'm going to film, however. This book, this notebook, you can see it's pretty thick. It says YouTube scripts. <laughs> I've had this for like over two years and probably none of these have been published. Half of them have been filmed. Anyways, thanks again for supporting the raw and honest video format. I appreciate it. Okay, so you're hurt. It's a compound exercise. Let's say bench. Let's say shoulder. That's an example. Of course, every exercise and every joint is different. I am just picking an example because it's more useful to discuss this way, right? So, have you been hurt in this place before? Have you had an accident? Do you know that this joint or this muscle, whatever is hurting, has previously bothered you or no? Like, for example, I have problems in my lower back. I have a hernia, I have scoliosis, my scoliosis is pretty severe. So I've had pains before I started lifting. I actually hurt my back before I started lifting. I have knee issue. I have hurt my knees before I started lifting. I had a surgery. They have been bothering me ever since on and off. I would wake up one day and they would just hurt and I wake up another day and they're perfect. It's not always correlated with my activity. It's not always correlated with how much I lift or anything else. Sometimes it just happens. So is it one of those things that your old injury is kind of just flaring up? Is exercise actually bothering it? If you think the exercise is actually bothering it, let's look at your technique. If you need a technique audit or form audit, feel free to send me a video into Instagram DMs or on Facebook, and I would love to check it out or send it to my coach if you would like his opinion instead, and he would give you some feedback. Don't shy away from it. My socials are in the description. So if you think form is not the concern, what then? Maybe it's too much volume. Maybe you started lifting, let's say, recently. Let's say you're a small woman and you've started lifting, I don't know, half a year ago. You've been progressing good, everything is awesome, but some things are starting to bother you and like it, it feels like some joints and tendons are just not catching up with the growth of your muscles. That could be the reason. Joints and tendons recover over twice as long than muscles do. So do give them a little bit more time. I don't recommend spacing deadlift too close to each other. So like doing two a week or doing squats like three times a week, that's kind of overkill. If you have a smaller upper body, not super developed shoulders and like back yet, 
I also probably wouldn't recommend too many dips, too much bench at first. What you can do is to not overload your joints is to split, for example, upper body and lower body. And you can program them separately, right? Let's say I'm gonna program my bench. My bench is gonna go week one, day one, week one, day two, only two for the first couple of weeks. You know, week two, day one, week two, day two, and I'm just gonna keep going, right? My squat, again, write it all out, however I wanna progress it, and then deadlift, again, separately. I have three lines, three. <laughs> I have three lines throughout my week. So my days are gonna go this way, and then my weeks are going to go, ah, don't blow away. Sorry. It's nice to film outside, but it gets windy. <clears throat> okay, so let's say week one, column first, column number two is week two, then week three, week four, etc. Right? So your lifts go this way and your weeks go this way. So that's at least how I set up my Excel sheet. It's super easy. That's how I program for my clients too. Uh, and you can just write your percentages or your weights or your RPEs and look at them throughout time. And then you can merge whatever you feel like you can handle central nervous system wise into each workout. For example, I have two bench days the first week, right? And I have two squat days and one deadlift day. I decided that my spacing between deadlifts, not to overload myself and due to like lack of time or other things are going to be 10 days or nine days. So more than a week. So that means I don't just have one deadlift day each week. That means my spacing between each lift is different. And on one day I can do squat, bench and deadlift. On the other day I can just do bench and squat. On the other day I can do just bench. On the other day I can do just deadlift, right? And you can combine upper and lower, however, depending on how much time you have and how well you recover. I would probably recommend to combine them in as little amount of sessions as possible. So you can train one day, and once you're already warmed up, let's say for bench, you can quick, quicker, you can warm up for deadlift quicker, do it, get out of the way. You know, you don't have to shower twice, you don't have to go to the gym twice. And next day you can just completely recover central nervous system wise. That does matter, right? I do not recommend, for example, some of my friends and clients, they would be like, oh, I didn't finish my workout. I'm just gonna finish it tomorrow. No, that stuff expires. It doesn't transfer throughout time. You know, it's uh, like it, it burns, it, it's time sensitive stuff. So let's say for each bench or squat or whatever day, you have your accessories, right? Like for example, you have your triceps, you have your rows for the deadlift, you have some lateral, some single legged movements for squat. Just, oh, there goes a squirrel. Man, no, she jumped off. I was gonna film you, I was gonna give you some spotlight. Oh well. So in each of those days, I try to finish my accessories, say like bench accessories after bench. It doesn't make sense <laughs> to just go to the gym and then do a bunch of dips or a bunch of like triceps extensions and some other things kind of separately from bench if I already was going to just finish my bench and then move on with my life. So honestly, I would just skip that. Of course, depends. I'm talking about powerlifters now. I'm not talking about bodybuilders. With bodybuilders, I may take a little bit of a different approach. We also do less compounds and more training sessions per week. We split our muscle groups and tr try to train more, I guess, well, for hypertrophy, I would try to train more muscle groups and try to get more volume per each muscle group. So I like break body down into more um, parts <laughs> and try to just exhaust those muscle groups rather than for powerlifting, it's more compound lift wise. Those are the splits and that's my thinking. So what else? So if kind of looking at your preparedness and lowering your volume and splitting up the days and kind of chilling, doing less accessories has not helped with your pain, you can try to substitute exercises. So for example, bench. Bothers you in the shoulder? 
Let's try neutral grip. Has that not worked? Okay. Let's try a different barbell. Let's try to do lighter weights. Let's try to do dumbbells. Let's try to do a little bit more PT. For the back, what I really like is if my lower back is kind of messed up, I try to do some hypers and some reverse hypers before the deadlift or before the squat so those muscles are already full of blood, kind of a little bit tired but also really pumped and they like hold my back better, they engage better rather than if I go and I just do like my joint gymnastics and some cardio for warm up and then go into squats or deadlifts, then my back kind of like, I wouldn't say it's still warming up but it's not like super pumped with blood and super ready to go, like already tight and already like in place. I don't think that's a super scientific thing to recommend, but that has worked for me. That has worked for some of my athletes. So feel free to try that out. Let's see. I would look at, for example, if your joint is hurting, I would look at what your adjacent muscles to this joint are doing. Is one of them too tight? Is the other one kind of overstretched and weaker? For example, chest is normally tight, right? So I would take the lacrosse ball and roll your chest muscles against the wall. Back is usually weaker. Posterior chain is usually weaker. So bunch of rows, bunch of face pulls, bunch of delt raises, really, really help. If you cannot do pull-ups, do lat pull downs. If you don't have anything to do a lat pulls down with, buy a $10 band off of the internet, hook it up to the door jam, do lat pull downs at the house. There are options and a lot of my clients do those things at Planet Fitness, at home, at any gym with not perfect equipment or minimal equipment, you can still do it, right? Stretch your chest, strengthen your back, balance your body around the joint that is kind of sort of hurting. A lot of the joints hurt because the adjacent one doesn't have enough mobility. For example, knees hurt a lot of the times because ankles don't have enough mobility. So instead of trying to strengthen the knee, which you cannot because it's a bone, you can mobilize and stretch your ankles. Try to, rec try to talk to your doctor, try to get some recommendations from your PT. I can give you some recommendations, but I'm not a doctor, I'm not a PT, I'm a certified personal trainer. So I can give you suggestions of what, what worked for me and for my clients, but you need to check with your doctor as well. So my knees hurt sometimes. I do PT for my knees, I do lateral movements, I do Vrendenberg stands? I don't remember the last name of the dude, but when you stand on half of a bolsa ball with your eyes closed and one knee up. Or you can just stand on the floor with one knee up. Close your eyes, count to 60, see if you can do that. That really helps you with proprioception, so it helps your brain understand where the hell your body is in space. And weirdly, it does help with pain because your body can balance itself better in the situations that it doesn't have in real life. That has helped me tremendously to recover my knee when it was messed up. I would do that, I would do the clock exercise, and I would do some other exercise that uh, a friend of mine recommended when she messed up her knees in gymnastics. So, weird stuff like that. I would also stretch quads. Oh my God, most people's quads are tight, and most people's hamstrings are weak. So why don't you strengthen your hamstrings and stretch your quads? You don't have to do any super insane stretches for quads. Try the couch stretch. When you, you can just Google it or you can put the couch stretch in the search bar of this channel. I have one uh, in Total Body Lab YouTube. You basically uh, stand in the proposal position and then you stick one toe up the couch. So your leg is kind of like this. So your toes are this way, your knees on the floor and then the rest of your body and your hip is this way, right? So it stretches your quad like a lot, but you don't have to do it, you know, to such a steep angle. You can first lean over a little bit. The thing is, keep your lower back straight. Don't try to 
compromise the exercise with your lower back, then it kind of defeats the purpose. But yeah, pay attention to whatever is not flexible enough, such as knee pain, ankle is not flexible enough. And what is too weak, too strong, quads too strong, hamstrings too long and too weak. Balance that stuff out. And don't put too much pressure on yourself. We all experience pain sometimes. We all hurt sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't make sense because our body is a complex mechanism, but some things you can figure out like this. If you do need help with your long lasting pain, please stop whatever you have been doing. If it does not subside with those tips, stop what you're doing. Don't push yourself. Maybe you have an inflammation and just need to rest and please go to the doctor. I would be very flattered if you reach out to me, but unless I see you in person or see videos of how you move, I can't recommend anything and I'm not a doctor. So as much as I would love to help, I would love to check your form. I would love to talk to you and maybe give you some tips of, from my previous experience, my client's previous experiences. But I do think that if it's a, like over five from, from the, on the scale from zero to 10, over five level pain, you should probably get checked out. Doesn't hurt, right? Anyways, I hope this video has been useful. If indeed it has been, please give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend who needs to hear it, and write a comment. That's more than four words. Is it difficult? Just write one, two, three, four, put an exclamation point, okay? And then I would know you watched it until the end, and I would give you a virtual hug. Compliment of the day. You're so sweet. I will give you a virtual hug. <laughs> Bye. I will see you tomorrow.